While we're all stuck inside, it can be tempting to reminisce about better days of the past when we could, for example, go outside. And while we can't do that yet, we can always go back in time and revisit the online trends and memes that made us laugh in the past. Twitter has probably the best historical archive of internet activity in existence, going all the way back to 2006. And there's good news, you can access this data for free. I'm going to show you how you can get bulk data from Twitter and you can search like hashtags or trends and you can specify time ranges all the way back until 2006 up until the current day. So it's actually pretty easy once you know where to look. You just have to go to the official Twitter API documentation which I'll link to below and you'll get to this page. So you can see that when you use the standard Twitter search API, you can see my other video on that, it limits you to a sampling of tweets only in the past seven days. So this is probably ideal if you're looking to do real-time analysis. It's not ideal for looking at historical trends. If you want to do that, you can look at the premium API. And I always thought this was paid, but apparently you can access a little bit of it for free. They can give you up to 50 requests per month for free so you can get a feel for it, and it can actually get some good data about it if your niche you're going after is small enough. So let's check this out. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see how Twitter breaks down the pricing for their API access, and we can see premium full archive endpoint. Let's check this out. So here under product packages, we can see they have the free sandbox access that enables initial testing. So even though it's a sandbox, it'll give you back real data from public tweets on the internet all the way from 2006. You can just see here the restrictions are you can get the full archive, you can get 100 tweets per request, and you can only do 50 requests per month. That's on the pricing page. Twitter even gives you a full step-by-step -step guide, which I have linked to below, which shows you exactly how to use this API for free. So all you have to do is create a developer account, and then you just need to create this developer environment. So once you have your developer account, go here and under search tweets, full archive sandbox, you can set up an environment just like I did here, and you have to pick a name for this. So I named mine dev for now. This is very important because it actually determines the endpoint you need to use. So when we go back to their example API here, you can see that they have this env.json field here. So just replace this env with the angle brackets included with whatever you named your environment. So I called mine dev, just put that here. Then you get your app token and you put the app token in here where it says bearer token. And then you can hit their API and you'll get back data. So you can see you can give advanced queries like who you want the tweet from and language English. So this will give me all the English tweets from Twitter dev. Uh, I personally like using this with hashtags, so it'll give me all the tweets that contain a specific hashtag. I believe you can do free text search, like and and or operator, similar to the Google search, and you can go all the way back from 2006. And here's where you put in the date range. So if you leave the date range as blank, they'll just give you the most recent tweets. That's probably not what you want. So here you can put in literally 2006, Jan 1, 0000, and then whenever you want to get this through until the current date. And you could keep paginating through those results and build a complete archive of everything you want to search for. However, realistically, when you're on the free plan, you can only do 50 requests a month. So each of those pagination calls counts as one request. So you can only get 50 pages worth, so you can get about 5,000 back for free per month. You can see an example response here. They give you a JSON back, and they just give you the text of what the tweet was, uh, some HTML about it, and some more data, like was it truncated, things about the user who posted it, uh, probably if there are mentions, if it's geotags, you can look at the coordinates. So this is really useful if you want to see how a hashtag evolves over time across different locations in the country or across the world. You can see the uh, geolocation information about that. You can see who retweeted it. And there's a whole bunch of other things here. But this JSON format is, I don't know, it's kind of difficult to use. This is all just from one tweet, so it's difficult to really make use out of it. So, you know, at this point, uh, if you want to do this on your own, this is a good stopping point for you to implement this URL using Python or some other Twitter API library. I know there are a bunch out there that can do that. So you can go down this route and spend like four and five hours fiddling with the API and building your own code. Or if you want to consider a paid and hosted solution, I'm going to show you how you can get this data really quickly in a CSV format. And it'll also be able to automatically paginate through all the 50 different requests automatically and get you a single CSV with 5,000 tweets based on your query versus having to figure this out for yourself. This is the same endpoint we looked at from the Twitter documentation, 
but here on the Steve C data platform, which full disclosure is a paid product that I just so happen to own. So what this does is it allows me to parameterize access to the URL. So if you remember that label environment we had to provide here, if I just type in dev over here, Steve C will construct the URL for me and it'll even give me the curl command with everything substituted in for me automatically. And what I can do is I can just use this interface to query that endpoint. So I want to search for some beer and I'm going to put in my Twitter access token, leave the pagination cursor blank for the first request and I'm going to put in a time range. I'll use the default and go back to 2015. So I want to look for people posting about beer on Twitter in 2015. And if I hit execute down here, Steve C is going to go and query Twitter on my behalf because I provided my access token. And it takes all that messy JSON and it flattens everything out automatically into easy to consume CSVs. So here it parsed the response automatically and suggested the results I'm probably most interested in. So it found the results object, which are the raw tweets. And I can download this here as a CSV. So each row here represents a tweet. I can see some metadata about the tweet that Twitter gave me back. So like here's the person who posted it. I can see other things like this is when the person created their Twitter account, 2009. I can see the number of tweets this person made. I suppose this is up until the current date, not until the date of the tweet. Uh, we can check the Twitter docs for more about what each of these columns mean. They represent the JSON structure. And we can see other things. So Steve C does some other things and it goes to the geo coordinates and it flattens that out for us. So instead of having to parse all the JSON, it just goes to the geo tag and automatically flattens that up for us. So I can see where this was geo tagged. It shows me this was in Swamp Scott, in the United States. So here's some more things that are returned from the Twitter API. Uh, there are people who are mentioned. So this is the first user that was mentioned. Steve C gives that to me for me and the CSV for free. You can see there's a whole bunch of other things that the file gives us. I can also scroll down and I can see other suggested collections that Steve C gives me. So because each tweet can have multiple mentioned users, multiple hashtags, they come as separate collections. So let's say I want to look at all the hashtags for all the tweets. I can go down to all collections and I can browse under hashtags. So I can see for the hundred tweets I got back, there are actually 343 hashtags. So I can just preview the JSON here and I can see all the hashtags that were used. And if I download the CSV, uh, that will stitch them back up to the raw tweet so I can map each hashtag used to each tweet. It'll just be a larger file with 343 rows. So this is great for getting one result set back of 100 tweets, but I wanna get 5,000 back, going through each page and going to the next one, paginating through and combining all those results together. So Steve C lets me use a product called Workflows which I can create from any endpoint and I can build it out and customize it. So I can basically tell the workflow to keep calling this endpoint over and over and I tell it how to paginate, I tell it what data I want back from it and there are a whole lot of other options. So I already went and did all that messy work for us and you can just import pre-made workflows by other users such as me here. So I just scroll here under workflows and I can import the already made workflow for me. So now I have a new workflow in my account around that Twitter search endpoint that will keep querying it and parsing out the data for me. I just have to put in my input parameters like I did when I queried the endpoint individually. So I put in my environment label, which is dev, my query, I'm looking for some beer. I put in my access token. And then under optional inputs, I wanna put in my time ranges. Again, they're not mandatory, so just make sure you check those here. I'll just do 2015 to 2017. And you can see how it does pagination over here. Steve C is using a self loop technique, which automatically looks up the response and gets the next token and then plugs it into the pagination cursor input parameter. So you can click through and see more about how that works here. So let's check the rest of the inputs, make sure everything looks good. So here's my access token. And then these are the extractors. So I'm going to get a CSV back for all of these. So the first one I looked at is the tweets. There's gonna be 100 tweets per request we made, but like I mentioned, each tweet can contain multiple hashtags, multiple user mentions, multiple photos and videos or URLs. So I also wanna get those back. So this is gonna give me a CSV containing all the hashtags individually, and it's gonna contain more than 100 rows per request because each tweet can contain multiple hashtags. So this is good, for example, if I wanna plug in one hashtag and then analyze what other hashtags are being used by other users over time, and maybe I can make a time series or do some analysis like that. And then I go to some more technical issues. I'm gonna use a shared proxy. I'm just gonna do a quick demo. So here, I still only have the free account, so I only have 50 requests this month. Uh, so I'm just gonna do five requests. So I'm gonna tell Steve C to run only up to five times total. So I'll get 500 tweets back from this sample run. 
and I can name it. So I'll do beer tweets 2015. I can have it send me an email when it's done and I hit execute and Steve C is going to go and do its thing. Now it's running, it's making the first request, so you can see it plugged in my access token, which I'll have to blur out, and it put in everything that I did in the initial uh, request that we did, it put in beer under query, and now I can see under the second request, under pagination cursor, it plugged in the response the first requ request gave me back and put it in here under pagination cursor. So that got me the second page of the results. And then it keeps doing that as it progresses until it gets to all five requests that I wanted to make. Finish doing, it's on four, one more to go. It's now at five requests, and when it's all done, it's gonna stitch the results back together for me, and it's gonna give me those five CSVs back. Okay, it's finally done. It sent me an email telling me it's done, and now I have my five CSVs. So the first one I said is that because I did five requests, and each of them are gonna give me 100 tweets back, I should expect to see a file with 500 tweets. So it's here, it's named after the extractor, so this is called tweets, it has 500 items in it. Here's the output file with all the tweets. It looks very similar to the one we looked at before, other than when I use workflows, it shows me the inputs I put in. So if I won't run different ones of these, I can sort them out quickly. But most importantly, it has more than 100 rows. It took all those five requests and it combined all the tweets together into 500 rows. So I can see them all here together. I can do analysis on them. I can see the geo coordinates. I can see other things like the first hashtag used in each one. And in addition to the 500 tweets, we can also see all of the other data associated with each tweet that's now denormalized. Like I mentioned, the hashtags from each tweet. From the 500, there were a total of 1,551 hashtags used. I can click on this, and I get a new CSV file now where each row represents a hashtag paired with a particular tweet. So I can see here the first five rows correspond to a single tweet using all these hashtags. It showed up in my search because it used hashtag beer, but it also contained these other very appropriate hashtags. So I can scroll here and I'll see that the tweet is now on the right and it was duplicated over five times. It was denormalized. So this results in a bigger file, but it lets me find which tweets are associated with which hashtags. And I can do interesting stuff like build a co-occurrence graph or make some other charts and timelines. Or like I mentioned before, use the geo-coordinate data and show how all these hashtags evolve. And there you have it. I got historical data for hashtag beer in about, what did this take, five minutes to do? You can do this with any hashtag or query search that you want. Uh, Twitter allows you to do more advanced searches, like I mentioned, from specific users or using free text. Uh, I like hashtags. I think they're good for historical analysis if you're looking up brands or for different marketing purposes or trends. Let me know in the comments how you plan on using this. What are you looking for? What kind of trends do you discover? What other data would you like to get back from this in addition to like tagged users or URLs? Uh, if you want to do more scraping, let me know in the comments and I will continue making videos. Thank you for watching and stay data driven.